that's all I ever do. But now I see somebody has produced something. <laughs> now, but somebody has over there. And if they can catch what I'm saying, that's all for good, because then you'll be able to let Mr. John's in some way have this, and it can go to America. That would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. She was expecting a printed uh, text of mine. What yours had doing is actually much better. So that's splendid. So there will be a recording of what I'm saying, which will be able to get to Adrian. I'll put you in touch in a minute afterwards with the gentleman who's doing all the clever things. Well, he isn't, but it's the <laughs> So here we are then, today. And, and as I, let me go back to where I was before I put those things in brackets. To say, yes, we're still paying our last respects to Jeff, saying farewell to him, but we are here largely to remember him, aren't we? That's what we've come together for today, to remember him, to commemorate his life. You all knew him in one way or another, and your, the, the chapel's full of memories of Jeff in one way or another, so we've come to remember him. I'm going to say a few words about him in a minute. And then we're also here, another very important reason why we're here, from my point of view, the most important, we're here to commend him to God, to God's love and God's care and God's mercy. At the end of this is earthly life. Right, now, a few words then about Jeff. Born in Stoke, here in Plymouth, he was the older one of two brothers, uh, and he has a brother called Adrian, who lives in Rochester, New York, not Kent. Rochester, which is a, a, a town, actually, close to New York. I suppose they call it a city, in fact. Next to New York, it is. And he lives there with his wife, Yvonne. And I'm sure he's probably thinking about this at this time, uh, at the funeral of his brother. Well now, Jeff was married to Jan for a long time, well, something over 30 years they were married, and she sadly died about 10 years ago. And he was totally devastated by her death. Um, and there's another important thing for me to say, really, is that he looked after her for the last uh, five years or so of her life with great love and care and devotion. He really did. Much love and care. So I'm sure that many, probably many of you here today remember Jan. So we uh, pray for him, for her too. I'm sure that when you come to a place like Western Mill or New York, anywhere to a funeral service, you obviously think of others who have died, members of your families perhaps. It brings it all back to your minds. Friends who have died, family members, whoever. Some perhaps a long time ago, others more recently. And so let us remember, as we pray for Jeff today, also to pray for all the departed ones that we, that we love and we remember so well, so fondly, indeed. So he was married to Jan for all those years. They, as a boy, when, let me go back, it's not always absolutely um, in, in order, this. As a boy, he lived with his family in Devil's, uh, Devil's Point. They lived there for some time. Um, but he lived there with his parents at Devil's Point. Well, then, when he was married, he lived, first of all, in Tavistock. And uh, then in, uh, uh, in St. Morris, but in St. Morris. And, uh, and then he's remained there, he's remained in Plymouth, made in Plymouth. I imagine there are perhaps a number of people from Plymouth to the end of the day. Well now, uh, so what, what about his working life? Well, uh, he went into the dockyard after he left school, and uh, he was a apprentice shipwright. And uh, he worked there for a long time, went to the dockyard, he, he obviously did his time, and then he became a shipwright, qualified uh, as a shipwright, and then he worked for 25 years, a long time. And then, after some time, he gave up and the dockyard and did gardening services um, until he retired. He did gardening service, services with a friend. Um, as I say, he was able uh, to look after a great love and care of his uh, jam. He was, a, he was a man with a very good sense of humour. All this information, by the way, which I got for you today, has kindly come from his aunt, uh, who's been very good in providing me with all this information when we met the other day. A good sense of humour, had lots of friends. Well, I didn't say that really, because they all are. Many of you, he had lots of friends. Uh, and I believe that lots of friends, and you've said this to me several times, Doris, uh, he, lots of friends supported him now in these last times. Uh, he was supported by a lot of friends, and I'm very pleased that you were able all to support him. Um, he was supported after Jan's death by
by friends and family, of course. Um, his own mother, Yvonne, died only relatively recently, in December 2010. And he did, in his time, a lot for her also. Did a lot for her. Well, now, he became, sadly, he became ill only a year or so after his, not even a year, some months after his mother's death in 2011. Well, now, what he did, he looked after himself largely, but then friends and family gave him, again, friends and family rallied around and supported him throughout this long period that he hasn't been very well during this final illness of his. He was um, in, um, uh, in Derryford, and then in St. Luke for about four weeks, and then he went only a stone stroke from his home, which I know he appreciated the fact that he was able to go to St. Vincent's, which was literally a very short distance from where he lived. And um, he had wonderful care from Derry, both in St. Vincent's and at St. Luke. So we, we thank God for the care that he received during his last months. And uh, he was visited very regularly, I'm pleased to say, in wherever he was, at St. Luke's or St. Vincent's or wherever, wherever, by friends and family. So, um, there we are, really. Uh, he died peacefully at St. Vincent's, and we thank God for his life, for the care he received, and for the person that you all remember with much love and affection. I'm now going to commend him to God, and to God's love, and God's care, and God's mercy. And I just want to say to all of you who remember him and who have come along here today, when we get to know him, the people we get to know in life are people who we are, we are the people we are through the, other, the influence of other people. Especially people when we're people we know when we're young. But not, not only then, all through life. We are the people we are through the influence of other people. That's a tremendous burden on all of us, isn't it? It's a tremendous burden on because we are always an influence on other people and therefore we've got to live in the proper and correct way to be an influence on people if we want to influence them in the right way if we want to put an example before them so that's an awesome responsibility for all of us here today to go out and um, because I'm sure that you've all made some impression upon Jeff and uh, we thank God for your the impressions you've made upon, and upon all sorts of other people too I'm sure as I look around I see that some of you I can tell what some of the work you're doing, what you're doing, the sort of influence you probably have here and there. And um, you're a relatively, I must say, a relatively young group of people. Well, middle-aged to young group of people, really, many of them. So, uh, I hope you will go out of here with courage and determination to continue on with your lives. Um, you know, with perseverance, facing the difficulties of every day, coping with them, overcoming them, and carrying on until the next day. And then persevering through that. That's all we call life. And that's what it is. It's a question of carrying the cross every day. Carrying the cross, just as Jesus carried the cross. But when you were given a cross to carry all of you, your shoulders were made just the right size to carry it. So carry the burden, carry it, and continue on. And may God bless all of you who come to this service today. Unless I, I must I give this out now, I might, otherwise I might forget it. You're all most welcome after this service to the Union Inn in Underwood in Plimpton. The Union Inn Underwood in Plimpton. Now, before we come to the prayers, let us sing the 21st Psalm, which you've asked to sing today, in the blue book you've got there in front of you, page 1. 